guys welcome to my kitchen and welcome to my home today we're making mini pizzas I'm so excited I just I just love making them and I love eating them they're like pizzas that are this big seriously they're like tiny and they're so 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 good they are the perfect party food in fact I'm making them for my daughter's birthday party third birthday party which is um, next month but I don't have time to prepare mini pizzas the same day of the party so I'm preparing them now and then I'm going to freeze them and then the day of the party I just take them out of the freezer and uh, thaw them and serve them I mean how easy is that right to be to be able to prepare your party food ahead of time one month ahead of time hey that's neat and I'm also going to show you how I make my very famous pizza sauce which is so 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 easy but it's so much better than using the um, the canned or the ready-made pizza sauce if you don't have time or if you don't want to make uh, the, the pizza sauce from scratch no problem you can use um, like a, the, the canned pizza sauce but I do recommend that you use this pizza sauce it is so 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 good okay so let's get started the ingredients you need to make the dough are some dry active yeast some flour, some sugar, some salt, warm water, a little bit of vegetable oil, and some plain yogurt. The ingredients you need to make the pizza sauce are some strained crushed tomatoes or tomato puree. If you can't find this, then you can definitely use um, a can of crushed tomatoes or diced tomatoes, which you can puree in the blender. You also need some salt, some black pepper, a little bit of garlic powder, and optionally you can also add some crushed chili powder if you want um, your pizza sauce to be spicy. If not, just skip it. You need some oregano and a little teeny tiny bit of olive oil. For the topping of the mini pizzas you need some shredded mozzarella cheese, some tomato sauce, some olive halves, some mushrooms, and you can add other toppings too. The first part of making the dough is to activate the yeast. So in a medium bowl, I'm going to place the yeast, the sugar, and the warm water and just mix it around until the yeast starts to foam. It is very important that the water is warm and that means it should be slightly warmer than room temperature but of course it shouldn't be boiling so it's between room temperature and lukewarm. And now we're going to wait for the yeast to start foaming and to activate and so in a few minutes you're gonna start noticing that the yeast starts to foam up and that means that your dough will will rise. If your yeast doesn't foam up, it means either your water is too cold, too hot, or your yeast is not good. So after about five minutes, you see how your um, yeast foamed up and almost doubled in size? So it's perfect, now we can carry on with the dough. Now, in a large bowl, you're going to place your yeast mixture and the rest of your ingredients. The flour, the yogurt, the salt, and the oil. And start by mixing it with a wooden spoon until it becomes very dry. So at this stage, just use your hands. When the dough sticks together, Start kneading it on your countertop. So sprinkle a generous amount of flour and using your hands, start kneading your dough for about five to eight minutes. If you feel that your dough is too sticky, just sprinkle more flour and continue kneading until it becomes smooth and kind of not sticking to your fingers anymore. If you have a standing mixture, of course you can do this using the dough hook attachment and that way you don't have to do this work. The KitchenAid will do the work for you. My dough is ready and I know this because, see it's smooth it's not sticking to my fingers, it's not sticking to the countertop, so it's perfect. And this took about eight minutes of kneading, so just shape it into a ball. In a medium bowl, just add a little bit of vegetable oil, just a tiny little bit, spread it in the bowl, and place your dough and turn it so that it's well coated in the, in the oil, and then cover it with some plastic wrap. 
and place your dough in a warm place for approximately one to two hours until it doubles in size. My favorite place to put this is in the oven which is turned off of course. There's no air that goes in there and that's about the warmest place I have in the kitchen. While the dough is resting, I'm going to make the pizza sauce. In a medium saucepan over medium heat, add one tablespoon of olive oil and then add all the remaining ingredients. So the tomato sauce and the seasonings. And stir the sauce until it comes to a boil. When it comes to a boil, cover it and let it simmer for 30 minutes over low heat. And make sure you stir it occasionally. It's perfect. Now I'm going to use half of my sauce for today, for today's pizza. And the rest, I'm actually going to store it. So actually, if you're not going to, to use your whole sauce today, like me, what you can do is you can store it in a, in a glass jar. And actually, this is an old um, pizza sauce glass jar, which I have kept. And just pour the sauce in it. And you can store the sauce in the freezer for up to two months. Can you see my dough now? It literally doubled in size, if not more. So remove it from the bowl. I need it for a few minutes. One, one or two minutes, that's all just to get the air out and then what you will do is you will separate your dough in 24 small balls you can use a knife if you wish or using your hands so first I'm just gonna roll it just to make it easier to cut Okay, so just cut it, cut it into a half like that, another half, another half, and another half, and so on and so forth until you get 24 pieces. Start by greasing a large baking sheet or baking pan, preferably non-stick and grease it with some vegetable oil. So after you finish cutting your pieces, create a circle out of each piece. You can use a rolling pin if you want, but because they're so small, I think it's just not necessary. I'll just spread them onto the tray directly, like that. So just work them with your fingers to create a circle and then spread them onto the baking sheet like so and don't worry if they're not perfect you know perfect circles because the point is not to have perfect circles the point is to have great pizza bites and that you will have I promise you They tend to pull back uh, when you stretch them, but that's normal. Actually, that's a good sign. Just, you know, stretch them again. <laughs> oh, and also, right before I started cutting my dough into pieces, I preheated my oven to 200 degrees Celsius. So this is what my dough pieces look like now. So now I'm going to start adding the toppings. So start with about I'd say two teaspoons or maybe half a tablespoon of uh, the pizza sauce and just spread it on the dough. Don't go all the way to the ends like that. And then add some cheese, Oops. about a tablespoon or you know, you'll be the judge. The olive, I like to place the olive and the mushrooms on top of the cheese so that they're visible. And don't worry, once the cheese melts, they're going to stick to it, like that. Again, spread the pizza sauce, cheese, 
cheese, piece of mushroom, olive half, and press it down like that. So now my mini pizzas are ready to go in the oven. I'm going to bake them in the hot oven for approximately 10 to 15 minutes or until they become the edges become lightly golden. So my mini pizzas are ready. They baked for 12 minutes. And you see how they are um, like golden. The crust is golden. They are beautiful. They look beautiful and I'm sure they taste beautiful, but they are very hot, so I'm gonna wait until they cool down to taste them. Look at that. Beautifully golden. Look at these babies. The babies, literally, they are babies. Look at them. They're so cute. Mmm. Mmm. Pizzas that are mini. How unbelievably amazing is that? This reminds me of my childhood. I mean, actually not my childhood, even until now. You can't go to a party, like an Arabic party, without these. So, I really hope you make them at your next party. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Bye, guys.